This is Q&A with Prof. Bato, the Ibato kay Doc Bato educational series for medical students and residents. The question thrown at us today is, Prof. Bato, what are the common renal tubular disorders in children? Always remember that the nephron, which is the functional unit of the kidney, has two parts, your glomerulus and your tubules. Your glomerulus is involved in the filtration process coming from the afferent arteriole and out of the efferent arteriole. The ultrafiltrate now goes to the proximal tubule, down the loop of Henle, then up the distal tubule, and finally in the collecting duct. Glomerular disorders are very different with tubular disorders in terms of clinical presentation. The glomerular disorders usually present with nephrotic syndrome or nephritic syndrome, and they usually have a decreased urine output. And this is because of the filtration barrier, which is an important and integral part of glomerular filtration. If you remember, the glomerular filtration barrier has three components. Your endothelial cell layer, your basement membrane, and your epithelial or podocyte cell layer. With nephritis, it is usually the glomerular basement membrane that is involved with minor injury of your epithelial or podocyte layer, such that these patients usually present with gross hematuria and with mild proteinuria. While your nephrotic syndrome, it is usually involving the epithelial or podocyte layer, such that they present with overt gross proteinuria or ultra-heavy proteinuria, but it also involves some of the glomerular basement membrane, such that they present with microscopic hematuria. So in other words, glomerular disorders present with proteinuria or hematuria and with decreased urine output, while your tubular disorders present with hypokalemic weakness, decreased extracellular fluid volume, and they usually present with increased urine output, or what we call as polyuria. And why is this so? Looking at this table, you can see there are four parts of your tubular system. Your proximal tubule, your loop of Henle, your distal nephron, and your collecting tubule. The proximal tubule is involved in the reabsorption of important solutes like glucose, amino acids, bicarbonate. While your loop of Henle is the concentrating part of your nephron, which leads to reabsorption of water and sodium. While your distal tubule is involved in the secretion of unwanted solutes like phosphates, potassium, and some other hydrogen ions. And finally, the collecting tubule fine-tunes everything, giving us a concentrated urine. So defects in these four parts will usually lead to, for proximal tubule, Fanconi syndrome from glucosuria. They usually have a normal and ion gap metabolic acidosis from loss of bicarbonate. They usually present with polyuria from loss of a lot of salts. And they have hypokalemia. While the loop of Henle, they usually present with polyuria, salt wasting. But what is important, it is involved with losses of calcium and magnesium and potassium. While your distal tubule is involved with the secretion of potassium such that a defect in this will lead to hyperkalemia, normal and ion gap metabolic acidosis, and even calcium, magnesium, potassium loss. While finally, the collecting tubule, it is involved with the reabsorption of water or urine concentration such that a defect on this will lead to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, hypernatemia, and dehydration. There are two types of tubular disorders, the acidotic type and the alkalotic tubular disorder. The acidotic type usually presents with growth stunting because of the chronic metabolic acidosis, and there's Kussmaul's respiration. It is the removal of too much carbon dioxide to compensate for the acidosis. And they usually present with normal an ion gap metabolic acidosis, meaning they are losing either bicarb or they are failing to secrete hydrogen ions. While your alkalotic tubular disorders, they usually present with cramps, GI symptoms like vomiting, 
and they have a high urine chloride metabolic alkalosis. Two common acidotic tubular disorders are your type 1 and type 2 renal tubular acidosis or RTA. Type 1 RTA is a failure to secrete hydrogen ion in the distal tubule such that their urine pH is always alkalotic. They are hypocytraturic leading to kidney stones. Type 2 renal tubular acidosis is failure to absorb bicarbonate in the proximal tubule. And what is interesting to remember that the urine pH is not always acidic. It may be alkalotic depending on your serum bicarbonate. It is alkalotic before the acidosis is seen. There are two common disorders that are in the alkalotic side or the alkalotic tubular diseases, which are your Barter syndrome and your Gittelman syndrome. Barter syndrome is seen in early childhood. They have hypercalciuria or kidney stones or nephrocalcinosis. They have normal serum magnesium and they have high prostaglandin, particularly PGE2. While your Gittelman syndrome is usually seen in adolescents and in young adults, they have hypocalciuria and their serum magnesium is low. But they also have normal prostaglandin PGE2. Managing these tubular disorders may be tricky or sometimes so difficult. But always remember these steps in fluid and electrolyte management for tubular disorders. The most important step or the priority in management is always restore intravascular volume first. Second is correct potassium followed by calcium. If your potassium and calcium is so difficult to correct such that they have refractory hypokalemia and hypocalcemia, check for serum magnesium. Most of the time, it is low, so correct it accordingly. So after magnesium, you correct the serum bicarbonate. If they are acidotic, try to correct it slowly and surely. And finally, correct the serum sodium by either putting a lot of water or removing a lot of water. For more additional information on tubular disorders or pediatric kidney diseases, don't forget to click the subscribe button.